My life changed when I had breast cancer. I now have a passion and a purpose that I didn't have. I was feeling pretty empty during that season of my life. And while I wouldn't wish breast cancer on anybody, for me, it changed my life in a very positive way. Instead of it all being about poor me, it was when I started looking out towards others that my life changed for the better. I'm Barb Demarest and I'm a retired CPA. For 30 years I had my own tax practice and I um, was controller of a chain of auto dealerships in Bellingham, Washington. And I've been married 47 years to a wonderful guy, puts up with a lot. And I have two awesome sons and daughter-in-laws and four beautiful grandchildren. My name is Phyllis Kramer. I live here in Linden. And Barb and I have been friends for a little over 11 years. We were in a women's group, um, a very close women's group from our church. And um, in the summer of 2000, I'm sorry, I have to think back, six years ago, so 2011, um, Barb was diagnosed with breast cancer. Well, it was a uh, routine mammogram when they came back and they said, we see a little something here we'd like to pursue. The wait was really hard for that first uh, doctor's appointment with um, the breast surgeon. All kinds of fears went through my mind, really not knowing anything about breast cancer. Although she had to have a mastectomy, she didn't need chemo or radiation. It wasn't until after my surgery when the doctor was unwrapping my bandages and I had found out that due to complications I couldn't be immediately reconstructed that it hit me. It hit me hard. The doctor said to me, he says, not everybody is ready to look at themselves yet when he was taking off those bandages. And that's when I thought, oh my gosh, is it really that bad? You know. I just, it, it hadn't really dawned on me, I guess. And the hardest thing for me during this whole process was hearing the voice on the other end of the line say, oh honey, I am so sorry, but you can't put anything on that scar for at least six weeks. I was horrified. Six weeks, I needed to get back to work. I wanted to be, get back to life. I didn't want to be Barb has breast cancer, I wanted to be Barb and I wanted to be normal. So I had not anticipated the impact of that and that's the first time I cried. That's when it all came down for me. Any surgery can have complications. If the reconstruction doesn't work out for one reason or another, then you're left with a mastectomy essentially without reconstruction. And if that occurs, uh, then you're uh, thrust into dealing with whatever complication. A mastectomy is surgery, and surgery can be sore. Uh, and there's a certain amount of time that you have to heal from surgery till you're back to normal. I was at one of my very lowest points after hearing that uh, I couldn't put anything on that scar for six weeks, at least six weeks. And so when I was in at my doctor's office, I picked up a brochure for the, the traditional breast prosthetics, and I was sitting in the exam room, and I was holding that. And I, you know, she was looking at prosthesis, and I knew that she would not tolerate this heavy prosthesis as I was talking about. They're heavy, uh, and they're hot. 
Uh, and I asked him, I said, well, what am I going to do? What else is there? And I asked her, you know, do you, do you sew? Or do you knit, actually? Yeah, I knit. And I said, well, there's another option for you, uh, these knitted knockers. And I brought out a flyer, which, you know, I, uh, it was just, it was relatively new to me. Uh, about these uh, knitted knockers, but it, it, it was a solution for another patient of, of mine, and uh, uh, and so I gave her the information. And this sheet of paper had a picture of a knitted knocker on it, similar to this, and it had a website address. And I grabbed that sheet of paper, and I said, "Oh, I I'm going to go get." The you know, find out about this. And he said, you can't have that sheet of paper because it's the only one I have. And uh, boy, it, she took off like a rocket ship <laughs> as far as uh, that, that, you know, getting that information. I went home and I called my good friend Phyllis. She said, hey Phyllis, have you ever heard of these? And of course I hadn't. I mean, why would I have ever have heard of knitted knockers? But I Googled it and I saw a pattern and so I downloaded the pattern and by that following Sunday, I had knit two of them. It was the next week when I ventured out into public for the very first time and I put on my bra and I put a sock in my bra, put on a really loose fitting jacket and I went to church and I was very, very self-conscious. brought them to church in a Victoria's Secret bag. I remember seeing Denny first. I didn't know where Barb was, and I said, Denny, where's Barb? And I said, here's something for her. Can you get it to her? And Denny hunted me down, and he gave me this Victoria's Secret bag. Well, I knew right away what was in it. So I took it into the bathroom, and I pulled out the most beautiful knitted knocker. It was soft. It was light. It was beautiful. I could get a hug with it without feeling self-conscious. And it was made by somebody who cared. You know, there's a time when women have breast cancer that they feel, um, I'm going to say not pretty. Not feminine, not pretty. And there's just something about something as easy as this that you can stick inside your own bra. You don't have to have a special um, ugly bra that holds a silicone prosthesis in it. You can wear your own bra. You can put this in and feel like you're, like you're pretty again. I couldn't help her in the surgery. I couldn't prevent the cancer. I couldn't stop any of this from having to happen. I couldn't stop the, you know, the way you were feeling, but I could knit. It was something I could do. She was so happy, because she went in and she pulled out that sock. I put this knitted knocker in my bra, and I took off that jacket, and it was life-changing to me because I re-engaged with life. And it literally not only changed her life, but it's changed the lives of thousands of women ever since. I went out and I hugged people and met with them and it was like Barb is back. From that day forward I just started knitting knockers. I mean for a long time I almost think I was the only knitter where I would just you know knit them and give them to Barb and she would stuff them and she would bring them to Dr. Kaufman's or Dr. Whitney's office and slowly but surely word caught on. <laughs>
how did we get from that little small beginning to where we are now giving away thousands, a thousand a month all over the country and all over the world? Well, it didn't happen overnight, but it did start with the vision of providing these to our local doctor's offices. I went back to my doctor, Dr. Kaufman in Bellingham, Washington, and I said, if we could make these and provide them to you, would you hand them out to patients? And he said, we'd love to do that. It would be so great. Love to do that. Good. This is Allie. This Hi. is Barb. Hi, I think Allie. I've seen you in passing before. And nice that to could be. You. I know you've been this. crying for these. Uh, crying. <laughs> We've been crying. <laughs> we even had somebody say they were in there and all they saw is one big knocker where are they i uh, know and i'm like okay i gotta get over there we've had um, so many people ask about those recently too i know yeah. have you you know oh. we're sending a thousand a hey, month hey barb off. is here you're kidding orders. oh yeah. my gosh yeah. yeah that's fine that's crazy Thanks. to have these in my office uh to be available and i can just walk in here and say here you know tell me the tell me what color do you like you know and what's is is this this is a little bit well, these are about the same size but you know this is a little bit small this is a little bit which one works for you you know and they pick them up and they to for me to just walk in real time and give it to them and say okay take it well, you mean I can take it you know yeah you can take it well what do I cost what do I have to pay you no you don't have to pay me it's, it's donated free by what I don't like the sisterhood of 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 women who uh, support the concept that you've been through a difficult time. And the women who made, who made this one, well, I'll never know who made this. The patient will never know who made this one. And the woman who made it will never know who got it. But they both appreciate each other. They both have this relationship that you don't even, you know, it's not tangible, but it's emotional. And uh, these are made perfect. If you look at these things, they're all just right. Every one of them, they're made just right. There's a lot of energy and effort and perfection that goes into this because it's a labor of love from the women who are, who are knitting it. They, don't, they may know someone who had breast cancer, they may not. Their relationship is they're a woman because they know that they're at risk, they know that it's the most common cancer in women, and they know that they're doing something that, that can't be done by anybody else. I was blessed in that the first one I knit was for a friend, you know, somebody whom I loved and had a relationship with. But after that, I've knit, you know, probably, I figure I knit about 100 a year. So I say I've knit 600. Um, so 598 have been for total strangers. People I, I, don't, I don't have a clue. But I know it's somebody like Barb who needs one. I hear stories when asking people, why are you making knitted knockers? Well, my mother, I remember her struggling with her prosthesis and how miserable she was with us. I just wish we knew about it back then. Or um, I do it because uh, my sister had breast cancer. Or I knit my own. I wore one and I want to give back and help others. And then I hear from people that, and myself included, we need to have a passion and a purpose in life. Uh, we need to have meaning. And when you hear that somebody's struggling, you want to help. How can you help? I'm here today at Knitted Knockers because I wanted to make a difference in other women's lives. It's an hour and a half drive, so I don't, I'm not sure how many miles it is, but it's a good cause. Um. For all those people who can use them, <laughs> I feel like I'm doing something useful by making them. One day, Pat said, it's easy to write a check, but this you're really doing something. My son has just gone through brain cancer and I couldn't knit him a brain but I could knit these. So, <laughs> he's gonna be okay though. He's, he's recovering now but, but it was... <laughs> See, I told you I'm going to It's okay. I can't. I have. Oh, thank you. I haven't really talked to anybody about it. I had breast cancer, and I had what at that time they did lumpectomies. The medications that I had been taking caused uh, a lump to grow. I 
was diagnosed with uh, endometrial cancer four years ago. And no one in my family has cancer. I went for my yearly mammogram and I had breast cancer. I only cried once um, after um, I had the first one. And my daughter was over there with us. And um, I happened to take a shower one evening and the bandage come off. And uh, I, I, it just startled me for a minute that I was lopsided and I don't know. And I just cried when the bandage come off in the shower. My only thought was always to, to think positive. It's not the end of the world. You're gonna get better. Life goes on. The number of women who are affected by breast cancer is, is greater than we can even imagine. Everybody I know knows someone or has been personally touched by breast cancer. It, it has no boundaries. I mean, it's can, if the young, the old, it doesn't matter. Women from as young as you to our age and older. To all women out there, um, if it really doesn't matter what your age is, breast cancer can affect you. When the time comes that you have mammograms, um, you've got to start doing it. I, I remember when I had a, a mammogram taken and I said to the lady, gosh, I'm, I'm nervous, I'm always so afraid, you know, that I'm going to have breast cancer. And she said to me, if I had to have cancer, breast cancer is what I want to have because they have made such leaps in, in the uh, way that they deal with it now in the treatment. It's a fabulous project and I've, I've talked to a couple of people that have worn these and their reaction. Um, <laughs> this one lady was really funny. She, she pulled out her old silicone one from the doctors and threw it across the room. Oh my God. <laughs> That's how much she liked these better. I've worn a knitted knocker for three years. I've now gone through reconstruction. And how did I feel wearing a knitted knocker? I felt confident. I just really like these. Um, they work really well for me because it's so much lighter than the silicone ones that I was wearing all those years. Uh, it's just like putting on nothing now. But they have a, a I mean, they have a real nice shape mm -hmm. to them and stuff. Women are just they are speechless and they're very extremely grateful yeah sometimes good can come out of of difficult times i have opened hundreds of packages every once in a while we get a box and we sometimes we open them here with the group around and we open up a box and it, it's just it pops open and you can just see it has 50 or 100 just beautiful knockers in it and we just we, we often take a picture of it and post it and send back and, and thank the knitters and crocheters a lot as well. We want to make sure that they know how much their gift is, is appreciated. Hello ladies. In this box you will find 122 knockers. Whoa. I he hope each one is acceptable and able to be sent to someone in need. There are size A, B, and C. Some are more colorful <laughs> as I tried to use up all the bits and pieces left over from the solids. Thanks to all of you for the hard work you do. Stuffing them must be a chore. Until next time. Oh my gosh, and they're perfect yarn. Yep. They're really well made. Look at, she bundled them together in yep. pairs. She probably order all that yarn and she just sat down and started making offers. What a joy. Sometimes we focus on what it's like to the user um, the woman who receives this, but one of the things that surprised us, we hadn't anticipated, was when a woman is requesting her knitted knocker, we started hearing from women about the struggles they had gone through with their mastectomy. To the caring hands of knitted knockers, thank you so very much for the gift of a knocker. I love it and appreciate your goodwill. They are so well made and comfortable. Gratefully, Gladys. Aww. I just want to thank you and your team for your kindness in reaching out to me. 
and others like myself. After a double mastectomy in February Sorry. 2017, you were the only hands-on organization who reached out to me and gave me a chance to feel better about myself after the amputation of both my breasts. You are all part of my victory cry, so I manage to feel better about myself each day. God has brought me through this because he has sent me his angels through the women in your organization. May you continue to use your talents and gifts for the good of others. God bless. What I hadn't anticipated was that this would become a place of healing. That women, when they would order their knitted knockers at knittedknockers.org, they would tell us their size, they would tell us their color, the choice that they wanted, but they would go on and tell us their story. and. I believe that they did that, be, they do that because they know we understand. So people are always asking, how can I help? And I like to tell them there's three ways you can help. You can help out by just learning how to knit. Spread the word through social media, telling your friends if you're going through uh, treatment, tell your doctor about them. That's a great way to spread the word. If they're not knitters, they can they can contribute dollars because it is not cheap. And we're all volunteers, nobody gets a paycheck. It's donated labor, it's donated yarn, it's donated fiber fill, it's donated postage, it's not cheap to send them out. We have Facebook, Knitted Knockers, and we have our website. Just go to knittedknockers.org. It tells you all about it. Social media is amazing on getting the word out to not only the women that can use them, but potential volunteer knitters and crocheters. I would encourage people to choose what makes a difference and do it. It doesn't matter whether you're a young mother with kids at home or you're a 95 year old woman in a nursing home. There is something that you can do and make a difference and you're not only changing somebody else's life, you're changing your own life for the better.